Hi, guys. Welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show. I'm Liz Wheeler. Okay, guys, have you seen the photos? Have you seen the photos of Republican Congressman George Santos supposedly dressed as a drag queen? He denies it, kind of. He denied it at first, I should say, when these allegations surfaced. Now he's not really denying it so much anymore. Now he's saying, what, what's the big deal? Do you guys not have a life either? Forgive me for having fun. This was a long time ago. He made it seem like it was a one-off thing that he just did this for fun at a festival one time. But there's some photos and there's some videos that maybe show us that Congressman George Santos is lying. This guy is a super big weirdo, like a real freak, a total weirdy weirdy. He has told any number of lies now on the campaign trail. He lied all about his resume, about his family, about himself. He sold a lot of really nutty lies too. He claimed to be Jewish, even though he's not. He now says he's actually Catholic. There's some really weird stuff that's just demonstrably untrue that he said. The left, the Democrats, oh my word, they are obsessed with him, completely obsessed with him. And they are not just obsessed with him and these lies that he's been telling. They're obsessed with trying to make him resign, getting rid of him in the US Congress. So I wanna talk about this tonight. This is what we're going to talk about, actually. We're going to talk about why the left cares, why the left is so singularly focused on Congressman George Santos, even though, I mean, I think we can all agree he's a liar. He's a big weirdo. He's pretty much a total freak. Does that matter? Does that matter that he's a weirdo and a liar since he's in the US House of Representatives? I wanna walk you through my thought process on this because my answer is no. It doesn't matter. So let's get to it. Okay, guys, it is time for the Genucel New Year's clearance event. I got you a great deal on this. For a limited time, you can save over 70% off Genucel's most popular package, and therefore you can take care of all your skincare needs. You can even turn the clock back with Genucel skincare. Make yourself look five, 10, even 15 years younger. Watch those horrible fine lines that we all hate, forehead wrinkles, sagging jawline, dark marks, maybe skin redness, and even those under eye bags, gone, vanish right before your eyes. Genucel works for women and for men. It is safe for all skin types and perfect for skin of any age. And with its immediate effects, Genucel promises results that will make you smile, guaranteed, or 100% of your money back right now you can get Genucel's customer favorite, their deep firming vitamin C serum, absolutely free in every most popular package. Just go to genucel.com slash Liz and enter L-I-Z at checkout. Every order place is automatically upgraded to free shipping for the new year. Don't we love that? So don't wait. Go to genucel.com slash Liz. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Liz. Genucel.com slash Liz. Okay, before we even talk about George Santos, I've been waiting to talk about George Santos, by the way. I don't know if it's just because this is gossipy, because he's so weird, because even for politicians who are notorious liars, almost every politician on both sides of the aisle that I can think of tells untruths. They misrepresent things. They're, they're liars. This is why I don't like any politician. But George Santos is a little bit different. He's not just a political freak. He's like a freak in real life, too. So I've been waiting to talk about this with you. We're going to talk about it today. But before we get to that, I don't know if you saw this out of the European Union. This is just super nasty. A new statute now is now going to allow food producers in the European Union to use cricket powder in products that they sell to you if those products are flour-based products. So like bread or crackers or cereal you know, things that we eat every day, even in beer and chocolate and soup and, you know, your, your, your dressing that you put on your salad. Well, it might have crickets in it now. Thanks to this new provision that's going to allow partially defatted house cricket powder. That's the a technical term for what they're going to allow. Partially defatted house cricket powder in your food. This is starting today. So no forewarning here. This is this. Now you might be eating crickets is what I'm saying. You wake up for breakfast crickets in a bowl of milk. Eat some lunch. Maybe you're going to have a, a nice ham sandwich with two pieces of cricket bread. Maybe for your dinner, a nice bowl of tomato and cricket soup. <laughs> this is the result of a three-year process that was conducted by the European Food Safety Authority. 
They apparently found that this is safe. Although I actually question whether this is safe. I don't think that safety has anything to do with this. They're billing it as some sort of climate change e type initiative. Like, oh, you don't have to use meat. This is an alternative source of protein. Here's the thing. There's not very many people that are looking for an alternative source of pro protein that's not meat or that's not found in like legumes and leafy greens. Most people don't want to eat insects. They claim that this is um, an alternative source of protein. They say it's safe, but I'm not sure that it actually is safe. There were safety signals that indicated that people who are allergic to shellfish might also be allergic to crickets. So, you know, if there's any volunteers who, who want to vouch for that, I have a feeling they're not going to find very many people who want to be the test subjects to see if that's the case. This is, they're doing this for two reasons. First of all, they're doing this to try to control our lives. They're doing this because just, I mean, this is an idea from the World Economic Forum, right? This is another example of a creepy, disgusting idea coming from Klaus Schwab that's infiltrating our lives. This is, Klaus Schwab is not just this boogeyman at a distance that we like to use to shoot, you know, fake arrows at. No, his nasty stuff is coming to our food coming to our food. So this is, it's a, it's a mode of control. It's because they have decided that in the name of climate change, that's the best way to control us. So that's their excuse here. But of course, this is also going to profit them. This is going to make it much, much cheaper for these food companies, these food corporations to produce food. And yet something tells me they're not going to lower the price of, you know, a loaf of white cricket bread compared to a loaf of real white bread. It's going to profit them. It's, it's funny because I saw this story today and my husband and I were talking about this the, two, three days ago, unrelated to the story. I think it was because of the World Economic Forum or something. Some, some celebrity was talking about some crickets. And my husband was like, crickets and mealworms are what I used to feed my lizards back when I was in elementary school. They're, it's literal lizard food to eat crickets and mealworms. And he goes, I will not be eating this. I will not be eating crickets and mealworms because that is food for a pet that you have when you're eight years old. That's pet food. It's lizard food. And I feel the exact same way. But of course, these ruling class elites, that's what they want us to have to eat. So then of course, then this ties in, then of course we have Kylie Jenner, one of the most famous celebrities in the entire world, the youngest in the Kardashian-Jenner family, perhaps the richest. She was supposed to be a billionaire at like age 18, 19, or 20 something around that. Although it later came out that perhaps she stole magazine, not stole, but she portrayed herself on magazine couple, uh, covers to be a billionaire when in fact she wasn't a billionaire. I honestly don't really care. That would not surprise me. But anyway, the point of all of this is if we could bring this picture up on the screen, this is Kylie Jenner at Paris Fashion Week. And yes, you are seeing that correctly. It's Paris. It's Kylie Jenner with a gigantic taxidermy lion head on the shoulder of her dress. I'm not talking like a stuffed animal here. I'm not talking about a picture of an animal. I'm not talking about a, a lion embroidered onto her outfit. I'm talking about like an actual lion head, like an actual head of a lion. It is a, a, a life-size head of a lion. It's bigger than her own head. It is her outfit. And I don't, I, it's so funny. I actually love when celebrities do this because it just makes them look like such idiots. This is not fashion, by the way. You don't have to pretend to think this is avant-garde or uh, anything special or artsy. This is not. This is just ugly. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But what's funny about this is not the actual lion head, as amusing as that is to look out. What's funny is her caption. Her caption on her Instagram post, this is what it says. She says, beauty and the beast. Thank you, Daniel Roseberry for such a special morning. Wow, I loved wearing this faux art creation constructed by hand using man-made materials. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> In other words, the animal rights activists criticized her almost immediately. No one thought that this was actually real. It looks like a taxidermy lion head, but of course it's not. That would be much too heavy for her to carry. Of course it's not real. But what does she do in this caption? She virtue signals. She acts like, oh my goodness, I, of course, obviously, it should be without question that I have morals too high to use real animal products. Like, does anyone believe that all of the, the makeup products and hair products and skin products and clothes and everything that they, that the Kardashian Jenners use is without, without any impact on animals? No one believes that. Yet, she wants you to think that she has such high morals that she would never dream of this being a real animal. Therefore, she calls it a faux art creation constructed by hand using man-made materials. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't think that Kylie Jenner and I have the same 
definition of the word beautiful. She is beautiful. Her face is beautiful. Her makeup's beautiful. That dress is beautiful. But that lion head is ugly, 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 ugly. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about celebrities. These celebrities are all part, in a sense, of the ruling class. The Kardashian-Jenners are not in politics. Although Kim Kardashian just taught a course at Harvard Business School, which should scare us all, any parent who has their child going to Harvard, should maybe rethink that if Kim Kardashian's going to be their professor. But the, these, these celebrities are in the, in the upper crust, right? They are the elite. They are the people who want to impose policies on us that don't touch them. They're the people that, you know, she flew her private jet on a 13-minute ride because she didn't want to take a two-hour car drive. These are, they epitomize the ruling class. So does Beyonce. What Beyonce did belays everything that Kylie Jenner said in her caption. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you why I like Four Patriots. A food shortage could be coming even in the United States. This is what experts wrote as recently as July. Drought, inflation, and yes, even new political policies are pushing America's food supply near its breaking point. That's a scary thing. It's why survival food is more important than ever. I encourage you to create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots survival food kits. I'm not talking about ordinary food. I'm talking about good for 25 years, super survival food that you might need in case of an emergency. It's hand-packed right here in the United States, giving jobs to over 200 Americans. And the kits themselves that the food is stored in are compact, they're sturdy, they're water resistant, they stack easily, very good for storage. They have different breakfasts, lunches, dinners. You can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. It's super easy. You just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. And right now, you can go to fourpatriots.com and use code Liz to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store. You'll get their famous guarantee for an entire year or after your order, plus free shipping on orders over $97. Just go to fourpatriots.com and use code Liz to get 10% off. That's fourpatriots.com, code Liz to start building your own stockpile today. Okay, so meanwhile, on, um, on, well, not really the other side of the world, but not at least compared to where Kylie Jenner is or was in Paris Fashion Week, but Beyonce, one of the most, another one of the most famous women on the planet, performed a concert for the first time in four years. She had not done a live concert in four years. I actually didn't realize that. I don't follow along that closely with Beyonce's touring schedule. She had not performed in four years, but she recently performed a live 70-minute concert in Dubai at the Atlantis The Royal Hotel. Very ritzy hotel in Dubai, very wealthy country. She was paid $24 million for doing this. $24 million for 70 minutes. Do you know how much that is per minute? Do you know the rate? $24 million for just over an hour of a concert. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Beyonce just released her latest album called Renaissance. And this album is supposedly dedicated to her late uncle, her late uncle Johnny, who was a gay man. And she made it very clear that she was dedicating it to her uncle because he was gay. She was dedicating it to her uncle, uh, it, essentially virtue signaling. I have no idea if she actually was close with this uncle or not, whether she probably loved him, he was her uncle. However, this was an absolute virtue signal to the LGBTQ community who make up a large part of the people, a large part of the demographic that Beyonce sells her products to. So she's virtue signaling. It's a political virtue signal. It's a business virtue signal. She makes this album all about LGBTQ uh, lobbyists or, or catering to, to the gay lobby here. Contrast that for a second. What I just said, this album dedicated to her late gay uncle who I think died of AIDS. She's virtue signaling to the far leftists on their on their gay lobby. And in the meantime, she collects $24 million performing in Dubai. Where is Dubai? Dubai is in the United Arab Emirates. In the United Arab Emirates, in UAE, if you take part in any kind of homosexual behavior, that's against the law. You can be punished up to and including the death penalty for it. Put to death. But for Beyonce, $24 million is enough for her to just overlook that. For her to just say, well, I'm gonna pretend that my album is all about gay rights. What about the rights of those people? What about the dignity, the humanity, the lives of those people in Dubai where you're performing for 70 minutes for $24 million? And I didn't hear her, by the way, say, oh, I'm gonna donate this to, to gay rights activists in the United States, or I'm going to lobby the government 
in the UAE to stop this policy. No, no, she's just collecting that, just pocketing it. It's beyond, it's beyond hypocrisy. These are the same people. They will not be eating crickets and mealworms. They will not be eating, they will not be eating cricket patties and mealworm burgers. No, 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 no. Only the best for these folks. Only the best for these folks. It's horrendous. It's horrendous. It's exactly what Kylie Jenner is doing when she virtue signals to tell you that, of course, she, how could you even think that she would use an animal product? Of course, it's faux. It's man-made. With, with man, it's handmade with man-made materials. All artificial, obviously. She's morally pure. Beyonce, the same thing. To the LGBTQ lobby, I dedicate this to you. I'm your champion. Meanwhile, I'm pocketing $24 million. No crickets and mealworms for them. Okay, so then we get to George Santos. George Santos is a Republican congressman who just took office. He was elected in November of 2022. He was sworn into office in January of 2023. He's brand new. Been in Congress for a couple of weeks. This is a picture of him. You can see him on the screen. Relatively young guy. As you can see, uh, I don't know that there's anything particularly strange about that picture. He just kind of looks like a dorky young guy, right? Dorky young guy. Okay. George Santos. Well, during his campaign, it came to light that he was telling a lot of lies. <laughs> like, a lot of lies. He was exaggerating his resume. He was exaggerating where he, he worked. He was pretending he worked in places that he didn't work. He was exaggerating, um, actually just outright lying. I don't even know if it was an exaggeration, where he went to college. And that's continued when he's gotten into office. The left didn't like that, and they called for him to resign. Kind of just a token call for him to resign until this came to light. This is a picture. Can we show this one on the screen? This is a picture of someone who looks an awful lot like George Santos. This picture was posted on Instagram by another drag queen named Eula, who claims that George Santos has, or at least in the past, had performed in drag shows, who was part of drag culture, actually was at some festivals in drag. And at first, George Santos denied this. He was like, oh, how dare you throw these allegations at me, blah, 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 blah. And then he was like, oh, well, forgive me for having fun at a festival once when I was younger. So already he's shifting the narrative. He didn't do it at all. Now he just did it once. Well, the allegations are that he did not just dress up in drag once, that he did this often during the course of three years from, I think it was 2005 to 2008, that he dressed up as um, the, in this costume and called himself by a drag name. I'm almost actually nervous to say this drag name because you know how sometimes drag names are... Um, I don't know what the proper term is, but drag names like hell in a handbasket, <laughs> they have some, some other meaning and oftentimes they're sexual. So um, he dressed up as this drag queen named Katara Rivachi. And um, this, this Eula, this other drag queen claims that there are videos of, of George Santos performing in drag. The first one isn't really a video, it's a gif. You can see it right here. Uh, this one, in this one, George Santos is supposed to be the one in red. Yeah, you can see it. I, I'm not certain that that's him. I don't know how this was verified. I guess Eula claimed to have known George Santos. I couldn't tell close enough in that in that particular GIF if that actually is George Santos. This is the other one. Um, in this in this video, George Santos is supposed to be the one in the black dress. <laughs> Is that him? Is that really him? It looks like him. I honestly can't tell. Maybe if there's some other verification. I was hoping that this video would be really clear because it seems like with this one, with George Santos' video is the only way to verify the truth with this weirdo. He says, he, he, he says he's gay. He campaigned as an openly gay man. He used to be married to a woman, but he never talks about her. He never talks about that marriage. And I've been trying to figure out why the left hates this guy so much. Because they certainly don't care, or they shouldn't care, that he dressed up in drag because uh, they promote drag shows for children. They're actively in the midst of elevating so-called drag culture, including exposing toddlers to grown men dressed in sexualized caricatures of women twerking, exposing fake breasts, doing the splits, bending over. And I mean, I don't even have, want to describe all the things they do letting little children put dollar bills in their G-strings, like really, really, really beyond grotesque, satanic, evil stuff. 
this is what the Democratic Party does and supports, and yet they're going to pretend to be upset because George Santos allegedly, over what, almost 20 years ago, 15 years ago, did this. Like I said, I've been trying to figure out why exactly this the left hates this guy, because it's not that. That's not the reason why. If anyone should be mad about George Santos dressing up in drag, it should be Republicans who understand that the term drag queen is a euphemism for a transgender stripper, or at least a transvestite stripper, that this is the sexualization of children, and this is exactly what it's intended to do. It is intended to destroy childhood innocence. It is intended to sexualize kids. This is the, this is the principles of queer theory. The principles of queer theory actually call for the sexualization of children, defend pedophiles, defend child pornography. That If anyone should be mad at George Santos for partaking in drag culture, it should be Republicans. But right now, the people that are frothing at the mouth are the Democrats. And here's the reason why. The real reason that the left is mad at George Santos is because he says he's gay, which I have no idea if he's gay or not. Don't really care if he's gay or not. I guess I have, when I say I have no reason to disbelieve him, um, I say that with a hashtag LOL in the sense that, well, he's a liar, so I don't really believe anything that he says personally, but if he wants to be gay, okay. There, I, I don't know how that would have helped him get elected in a district that was majority Republican, since a lot of Republicans are Christians who um, don't believe in gay marriage, but be that as it may, the real reason the left is mad at this guy is because he is a gay man who supported, openly supported Florida's parental rights and education law. The law that the left unfairly at categorized, mischaracterized, I should say, as the don't say gay bill. It wasn't a don't say gay bill. You're allowed to say gay in Florida. You're allowed to say gay in school in Florida. What it did was prohibit the sexual, or prohibit classroom discussions about sexual orientation and gender, ide and gender identity in grades kindergarten, one, two, and three. And it prohibited school administrators from hiding from parents when their minor children were transitioning at school. That's all it did. George Santos supported that. He is gay. He's a Republican. The left hates that. And so to see him dressed up in, in this drag outfit, if in fact this is him, which I suppose it could be. I have no reason to think that it's not, especially when he's admitted now that, it, that he, he did that once. And I bet in the next couple of days we'll find out, oh yeah, just a couple more times than once, huh? Um, this is the real reason the left hates him. They hate him because he's partially taking part in their culture. At the same time, he doesn't want the left to use the education system to sexualize children. Like I said, George Santos is a real weirdo. He's a, he's a liar. He's, he's a freak. We can all see that. Is it pleasant to have him? This is where we get into the political part. Is it pleasant to have this person in the Republican Party? No, obviously not. And it doesn't have to be. You don't have to sit there and pretend that he's your favorite Republican or that everything he does and says is defensible. It's not. I'm not defending anything that he's doing, actually. But does this mean that George Santos should resign from the House of Representatives? Does it mean that he should leave the US Congress because he's been caught lying? I'm gonna give you the answer to that in just a second. But first I wanna to talk to you about this new app I've been using, it's called Upside. You may not know this about me, but I love taking photos, I love photography. However, as a hobby, it can get very expensive, especially with all the price hikes lately. That's why I have to tell you about Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, dines out, or has expensive hobbies like mine. With Upside, I get cash back on every purchase that I can then use to fund all of the pictures that I print to put in photo albums. It's basically, Upside is basically cash back for just doing what you were gonna do anyway. It helps me offset inflated prices by giving me cash back on my purchases. The app, by the way, it's super easy to use. To get started, all you have to do is download the free Upside app, then use my promo code, Liz5, and you can get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. It's a pretty good deal. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside, then pay as usual with a credit or debit card, follow the steps in the app, and voila, you will get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars a year. So download the free Upside app, use promo code Liz to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's extra, that's an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using promo code L-I-Z-5. But first you have to download the free Upside app. Okay, all of these things can be true. George Santos is a weirdo. Yeah, he is. He's a liar. Yeah, he's a liar too. Seems like a freak. Yep, those, those videos and pictures of him in drag, if, if that is in fact him, that makes him a freak. 
Is it pleasant to have him in the Republican Party? Not really. Does he represent our, our morals, our principles, our values? Doesn't seem like it. Does that mean that George Santos, being a weirdo, a liar, and a freak should resign from the U.S. House of Representatives? Should he be forced to leave the U.S. Congress? That's, the Demo- that's what the Democrats tell us. My answer to that is heck no. George Santos should not resign. I don't say this in defense of the guy. I'm not defending a single thing that he said. I don't say this because I like him. I don't like him. I don't say this because I agree with the things that he said and done. I don't. But let's talk about a couple of the things that he said, right, to put this into context. So according to the Daily Beast, he was married to a woman for seven years, but during that seven years, he sent out a Facebook invite to an engagement party that he was hosting for himself um, because he claimed he was engaged to another man. Well, that seems like a pretty strange thing to do if you're married to a woman. He never addressed this on the campaign trail. He never addressed this in his biographical details. The left is really annoyed about this. The left is really up in arms about the fact that he used to be married to a woman and now he says he's openly gay but doesn't talk about it. And this tells you everything you need to know about the left's sexuality identity or sexuality ideology. It tells you that they're upset that someone's sexual partners are a choice that George Santos chose to be with a woman and then he chose to be with a man. That violates the very tenets of what the radical left is trying to indoctrinate into youth. The left is trying to groom your children into thinking that quote unquote queer behavior is innate. That if if you feel same-sex attraction and you do not act on it, that you are not being your fully authentic true self and that you can't help that you feel like this. That if you feel like that, it's your responsibility to indulge that feeling and gratify yourself through that behavior. That's what the left wants people to think. So they see people, they see someone like George Santos, who has obviously made different choices about his lifestyle and his life, and they see that he is contradicting the ideology that they are trying to teach to young people. He also claimed, George Santos claimed that he attended the Met Gala. I, I, I have to admit this one. I fail to see why he claimed that he attended the Met Gala. Like, what's the point of this? What kind of brownie points do you think that's going to earn you? Republicans hate the Met Gala. Democrats, you didn't go, so you didn't meet them there. So I don't know why you think that this is going to be a thing. But the Democrats, again, the left, is very up in arms about the fact that he lied about going to the Met Gala when there's no record that he attended that. And yet, it's the same left. When AOC attended the Met Gala, remember when she wore that that tax the rich dress? That ugly, ugly dress. She attended an event where an individual ticket cost more than the yearly salary of some of her constituents. And then afterwards, she claimed, oh, it was given to me, but it, it wasn't a campaign donation. Oh, okay, so you're just accepting favors from, from people who, whose ideology they want to influence how you behave in Congress. That's even shadier and even more corrupt. The left didn't care about that. They didn't care when AOC attended the Met Gala, but somehow they care when George Santos lied about it. I simply... I simply fail to see how that disqualifies someone from the House of Representatives. George Santos claimed that he was a volleyball player in college, a star volleyball player at Baruch College, and he didn't go to college. He did, he did not play sports. He did not play volleyball. He was not on a championship-winning team. He was not a star. He simply, Baruch College has no record of him attending the school. He, he also lied about graduating from New York University. He did not. There's no record of him graduating from that school. And it's weird to lie like this. But I will bet you, anybody listening to this show who has ever hired anyone, if you've ever had a stack of resumes come across your desk and you look through them, and maybe you take the time to verify the information, maybe you don't, at least 50% of those resumes are wildly embellished. At least 50% of those resumes contain at least one thing that's just not true that's deliberately misrepresented. This doesn't make it right. I think that's wrong. I don't think you should do that. But is it something special? I don't know if it's something special. Meanwhile, let's talk about colleges for a second. Meanwhile, our university systems that George Santos was lying about attending, they lie about discriminating against white people and Asians for admittance to their their institutions. They lie about, quote unquote, systemic white supremacy that has underserved students today who are Students today, I mean, these universities claim 
that black students and brown students today naturally score lower scores on standardized tests because of slavery, even though slavery, these students were never enslaved and the white people, their white counterparts were, were never enslaving them. This was not, this is not a factor in, in our modern lives. And yet they lie about, these institutions lie about our country, they lie about our nation's history and they lie about, about skin color and how much it matters and how much it doesn't matter. Forgive me if I have a hard time getting annoyed about lying about whether you went to college or not. Also, it's, it's not a qualifier for the U.S. Congress. Some of the most successful people in our country didn't go to college. I personally could not care less if someone went to college or not. This next one um, cracks me up. George Santos had some roommates that about two years ago accused him of stealing a Burberry, a Burberry scarf. A scarf, a designer scarf. This scarf is worth $520. If he stole it, that's wrong. Don't get me wrong. Like that's, 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 a, that's a lot of money, $520. It's weird to steal. It's wrong. It's immoral. It's criminal. But here's the reason the left cares about this. Here's the reason that the Democrats are up in arms about this. Because this designer scarf that George Santos allegedly stole from his roommates, he's wearing it in a picture at a Stop the Steal rally. Ah, well, it doesn't, take a, it doesn't take a sleuth, it doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out why the left is mad trying to bring this story to light because they're mad that he went to a Stop the Steal rally. They're not really probably very mad that he allegedly, I don't even know if he stole it or if it's like roommate stealing, which is like borrowing things without permission and then returning it. I have no idea whether it was real theft or whether it was just like roommate borrowing, but he wore it somewhere that they didn't want him to. And by the way, they, they the Democrats, they will steal our money. They want to take your money if you're rich and give it to give it to other people. They want to steal your children and your children's minds and your children's hearts and your children's bodies. But a designer scarf, a $500 designer scarf, that's what they really care about. That's what they want you to really care about. This is another resume item that George Santos lied about. He lied about working for Citigroup and Goldman Sachs. My understanding about this lie is that he worked for a company that worked on accounts related to these companies. So he didn't actually work for them. He worked associated to them. That does not count as if you put on your resume that you worked for these companies and you just worked on accounts related to them, that does not mean that you worked for them. But again, how many resumes have crossed your desk where that kind of exaggeration exists? Because most people don't, most hiring managers don't, they actually don't verify that sort of thing. Uh, in his hometown, George Santos started a charity called the Friends of Pets Charity. It's like an animal rescue charity. And the left wants you to be a gaff because was it a real charity or was it just a Facebook group? A Facebook group that planned events around animals. It wasn't registered as a nonprofit. So was it real? The scandal, the intrigue, the criminality. Resign, Santos, resign. I fail to see. Again, it's weird to lie about this stuff. I'm not sitting here defending it. I'm sitting here giving context to the outrage of the left. First, in order to understand whether the left is right or wrong or how we should properly order our response, we have to understand the what it is of what we're talking about. What is the What are the lies that George Santos is accused of telling? What are the lies? What did he actually do? And how is he misrepresenting it? Once we understand what he did and how he misrepresented it, we understand the what it is-ness of the thing, and then we can properly order our response. Sometimes properly ordering our response requires countering the Democrats' response. That's what we're doing right now. So he's also, George Santos is also, I don't know if it's misrepresented his name, but he's used different uh, derivations of his name in, in, in almost a way that makes it seem like he has a lot of aliases. So he's, he's elected as George Santos, but he's actually at times of his life gone by Anthony Santos, by Anthony DeVolder, by George DeVolder, by George Anthony DeVolder, by George A.D. Santos, by George Anthony Santos DeVolder. All of these, by the way, are permutations of his real name. Those, those four names, George, Anthony, Santos, and DeVolder, are all part of his legal name. And it seems that he's used different permutations. Again, is this criminal? No. Is it weird? It's a little weird. Did he lie? Is this a lie? I don't know. It's just weird to me. He also used another name, Anthony Zabrowski. Anthony Zabrowski, and we're going to talk, we'll talk about why he used that one. Zabrowski is not part of his real legal name. 
But before we do that, one, one little sidebar here is there is a group online or, or a cohort, I should say, it's not an official group, but there's, there's a bunch of people online who are calling for George Santos to show his birth certificate because they're, they're claiming that he might not be a legal U.S. citizen, therefore he might not legally be in the United States Congress. This is how badly they want him to re- be removed from Congress. And when I read that, I burst out laughing because I thought, wait a second, wait a second. Go back to, um, and even before 2015, I mean, this was like 2012, when Trump, this was before Trump was running, when he wanted to see Obama's long-form birth certificate. Do you guys remember that drama? When, when Trump was like, well, wait a second, wait a second. Are we sure that Barack Obama was born in the United States? Because we've never seen his birth certificate. And he organized this little movement to try to get Obama to release his long-form birth certificate. When Obama did release some kind of birth certificate, there were some anomalies on it. And this whole thing, this whole, this whole thing, it was like pre-Trump Trump. Like it showed us exactly what Trump was going to do, be unafraid to talk about controversial topics and just enrage the media with his questions. Anybody that dared to mention Obama's long form birth certificate was called what? Was called a racist. Was told that they were being a racist against Obama because Obama was black. Okay, that, compare that to this. When it's reversed, when it's reversed, when it's this guy of um, Latino descent, and the left doesn't like him, what do they accuse him of? Not being a U.S. citizen. Let's see your birth certificate. Prove that you're not a foreigner, boy. Prove that you're not a foreigner. They're not called racists, are they? Of course they're not. This brings us to that other name, Anthony Zabrowski. Anthony Zabrowski is the name that George Santos used when he was pretending that he was Jewish. This is, I actually think this is the weirdest lie of all. He claimed that he was Jewish. He claimed that he had grandparents who were Holocaust survivors, but that's not true. That's historically inaccurate. His grandparents are not Holocaust survivors. He's not Jewish. He he says he's Catholic, but this is what he says. He says, I actually never claimed to be Jewish. Quote, I am Catholic. Because I learned my maternal family had a Jewish background, I said I was Jew-ish. Okay, dude. That is the lamest cop-out that I've ever heard for a deliberate lie that was obviously meant to pander to the people of his district who were largely Jewish. That's the weirdest lie. He also lied about he, he lied about being connected to tragedies that he's not connected to. He said he had employees that were killed in the Pulse nightclub shooting. That's false. He said his mother died as a result of 9-11 because she was in the World Trade Center on that day. That's not true. He said, again, that his ancestors were Holocaust survivors. Not true. Okay, so all this being said, is he a weirdo? Oh, yeah. This guy is a real weirdo. Should he resign? No. He should not resign. Let me repeat that. He should not resign from the U.S. House of Representatives. Why would he do this? If he did this, if he resigned from the U.S. Congress, it would just give the Democrats a larger margin. We already have such a scant majority in the U.S. House of Representatives that if we lose even one Republican, it will make it all the more likely that a coalition of Democrats and Republicans squishes outsmart McCarthy. We need every Republican vote that we can get. I also refuse to play by the rules of the left where they play, they they hold themselves to no standards. They are completely amoral. And yet they pretend to want to hold Republicans to a set of moral standards. No, enough. I've seen that over and over again, and it's time to say stop. Stop. George Santos should not resign from the U.S. Congress until AOC resigns. She lied about where she grew up. She grew up in a perfectly wealthy neighborhood. She claims that she was impoverished to make her seem more relatable to her voters. George Santos should not resign unless Elizabeth Warren resigns from the Senate. Elizabeth Warren lied about things that were much more awful. She lied about being Native American and Cherokee. She profited off of this lie. She published a cookbook called Pow Wow Chow, and she's not even Native American. She's less Native American than the average white person in our country. George Santos should not resign from the United States Congress unless Ilhan Omar does. Ilhan Omar has lied, just like Rashida Tlaib has, lied over and over in their denial that they're anti-Semitic. Of course they're anti-Semitic. They don't want Israel to exist. They deny it, lying just for political gain. George Santos should not resign from the U.S. Congress unless Joe Biden resigns from the presidency. Biden lied about marching for civil rights. He never did that. He lies today, in fact. The White House on Twitter lied about abortion and ectopic pregnancy, lying to women, telling them if they suffer a tragedy, an ectopic pregnancy where their baby dies, that they're not allowed 
to have medical care for that, even though it can threaten your life because abortion is illegal. That is an outright falsehood, and Biden knows it. Why should George Santos resign if we have all these Democrats in office lying, lying, lying? I don't, I don't like lying. I don't like that George Santos lies. I think he's weird. I think he's a freak. I care a lot more about the policies from the Democratic parties. Policies like lying to us about whether Biden's tax plan will raise taxes on people making less than $400,000. Oh, it won't raise taxes on you, Biden says. It certainly will. They lied about that. What about, what about all the lies about abortion? That it's about a woman's body, autonomy, agency. It's not, it's not a life yet. It's not viable. Lies, lies, lies. All lies. What about lies about grooming our children with queer theory? They say it's not happening. We're not, we're not doing that. We're not teaching your children critical race theory. They say it's not in school. They're lying about not just this small little thing, not just a political ticky-tacky talking point. They're lying about things that impact you and your family. What about lies about inflation and spending? It's not, inflation's not just happening. It's happening as a result of Biden's spending. His policies are causing inflation. Yet he's lying. He's telling you that our economy is the healthiest that it's ever been, that he's, he's increasing jobs and wages. It's all lies. Wages are technically increasing, but inflation's outpacing wages, so it actually feels like the American people have lost like $5,000 a year in, in overall worth, in the overall value of their paychecks. Lies. All these politicians, these Democrats have told lies about the COVID-19 virus, about vaccines, about masks. All these mandates were built on these lies. The left lies about tolerance. They don't want tolerance for LGBTQ people. Look at how they're behaving when the hockey player, Provorov, refuse to wear a pride jersey. They're trying to get him kicked off the team. They're trying to socially ostracize him. What about Tony Dungy? He went to the March for Life. And oh my goodness, he should be fired. He should never be allowed to coach again. He should be socially ostracized. This is according to the left. They lie to their own, they lie to their own cohort. Look at what Beyonce did. She lies to the people she's trying to sell albums to, telling them, oh, I'm an LGBTQ ally. While she goes to Dubai, gets $24 million performing in a country that will put a gay person to death. They're lying to us about the reality that they're trying to socially engineer us. They're trying to change the very way that we live and that we think and that we act. They want to take away our cars. They want to take away our suburbs. They want to feed us crickets and mealworms, and they're lying about it. I will take that weirdo George Santos every day as long as he votes against these kind of communists. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.